Yo, what's up everybody? It's your boy Floss back again with another video and today we're going to do the real review of the Nexus 6P. Now before we get started, let me answer the main question that everybody been asking me all week. If you got a Nexus 6, should you sell this right now and upgrade to the Nexus 6P? And my answer would be yes. Alright, you're getting a way better phone. You're getting a better display. You're getting better battery life. You're getting a better build quality. You're getting a better camera. You're getting a fingerprint sensor. And you're getting USB-C connections. So that's a huge upgrade. Now, if you watch my channel, I've answered this question in the past. For example, with the HTC M8 and the M9, I said don't upgrade because it was pretty much the same phone. But if you've seen the Note 4 versus the Note 5, again, I said upgrade because this is night and day. All right, two totally different phones. The Note 5 is a huge upgrade. And it's the same thing with the Nexus 6P. Huge upgrade. Now, as usual, let's get into everything that I don't like first. And then we'll get into everything that I do like. Even before that, though, let me just address one more thing. The whole Ben Gate situation. Now, a lot of people have been asking me to do a Ben test on this. And uh, find out if the phone bends or not. And look, I'm not going to waste too much time on this. I'm just going to leave it like this. In the last 20 years that I had cell phones, ever since back in the days with the big Motorola brick phones, and then when phones started getting smaller, like the Motorola StarTex, then they started coming out with the square phones like this, HTC Evo, and you know all the new generation phones. In 20 years, I've never bent a phone, ever. And I'm talking about cheap plastic phones all the way to solid aluminum phones. Never had one bent phone. I, and I don't even know anybody that ever bent a phone. It's just ridiculous propaganda. You know, don't fall into the hype. You're never going to be in a situation that you're going to have to worry about bending your phone. Now, if your pants are that tight that you're going to put your phone in your pocket and sit down and bend your phone, easy fix. Just buy one size bigger pants. All right, shout out to the tight pants committee. Just buy one size bigger and you're not going to have that problem. All right, so we're not going to waste time talking about ridiculous stuff. Your phone is not going to bend. You're not going to have no problems with that at all. Now, the first thing that I don't like. All right, now, you're going to hear some of the usual, my usual gripes. No removable battery. All right, no removable battery. Now, even though this phone does have a 3,400 milliamp battery, which is great, but you can't remove it. Now, for me, that's not a big deal. I carry around portable battery chargers. I work in an office that I can easily plug my phone in. But that might be a big deal for you. Now, I was just talking to my homeboy the other day. He's a police officer. He went out and got a, a, a LG V10 specifically because of the removable battery. Now, he wanted a Note 5. He was interested in the Nexus 6P. But the removable battery was a deal breaker for him. If you work somewhere outside and you don't have access to a wall charger, and you, you know, somebody like a police officer and you're carrying around all this equipment and gear, you don't, you, don't, you, don't, you don't have any extra space to carry around a portable battery charger. You'd rather have two charged up batteries in your front pocket that you could swap out during the day. So for me, not a big deal, not a deal breaker, but you know, this video is supposed to help you when you're buying your phone. So if that's a big deal for you, take that into consideration. No removable battery on the Nexus 6P. Next, no wireless charging. Now, is that a big deal? Not really, but think about it like this. If you got a Nexus 6 and you upgrade into the Nexus 6P, if you bought a Nexus 6, chances are you went out and you bought a fancy wireless charger because your Nexus 6 supported wireless charging. So now you're going to have all these fancy wireless chargers laying around. You're going to have to go back to plug it in with a cable. Now, I'm pretty sure they're going to come out with a battery charge case or a wireless charge case in the future, but that's just more money you're going to have to spend. So no wireless charging. I think they should have did that. Now, I know a lot of people are going to say, well, the phone is aluminum. <laughs> you know, how are they going to do the wireless charging? Look, it's not my job to design these phones. It's my job to complain about stuff that I don't like. Next, USB-C. Now, this is a double-edged sword in some ways because there's a lot of benefits to having USB-C. But one problem about having a USB-C uh, connected device is you're going to have to babysit that USB cable, that USB-C cable. And what I mean by that is, you ever been to work and you forgot your charger or you forgot your, your portable battery charger? If you got a Galaxy Note 5 and the person next to you has an LG, a G4, somebody else next to you has a Google Nexus 6, whatever phone, chances are somebody in your office or somebody around you in that space has the same kind of micro USB charging accessory, either a phone or a battery, headphones, anything, where you'll be able to charge your phone. Nowadays, if you get something like this, 
you might be the only person in that office that uses a USB-C. Now, if somebody has a new MacBook, yeah, you might be able to, you know, borrow this. But nine times out of ten, you're going to be the only person that has the USB-C connection. So if you left your cable at home or you don't have a portable battery charger with a USB-C cable connection to it, then you're going to be out of luck. And there's no wireless charging, so you can't even just go use a wireless charger. So the USB-C, that's something I don't like. But I'm not going to complain about that because that's the wave of the future and there's a lot of benefits to having USB-C. So um, I'll take that. I just got to mention that. Now, shout out to Hawaii. Yeah, I know I say Hawaii. Shout out to Hawaii for throwing two cables in the box. So now you got one cable you could take and leave to work and you got one that you can leave in your house without having to spend any extra money. So I do like that fact. Next, fingerprint sensor on the back. Now, this is one thing I hate about this phone and any phone that has the fingerprint scan on the back. I don't like that placement. And I would prefer to have the fingerprint sensor on the front of the phone. Now, I know a lot of people are going to disagree. Some people like to take the phone out of the pocket and, you know, you have your index finger right here. That's fine. But what happens when you're at work all day and you got your phone on the table? Now, you got to keep on lifting up your phone to turn the fingerprint scanner, you know, turn the phone around to activate your fingerprint scanner. Now, you can easily just deactivate the fingerprint scanner while you're at work, but everybody knows Murphy's Law. The one day that you deactivate your fingerprint scanner at work, that'll be the day that you forget to reactivate it, you put it in your pocket, and you'll lose your phone that day. And then all of those pictures of your girlfriend sitting on the sink with a thong on, they're going to be on Instagram the next morning. Alright, so, I don't like the fingerprint sensor on the back. You may like that. Now, think about it like this also. If you work in an office somewhere... Maybe you work in an um, office with a cubicle, that's fine. But if you work in an open environment or you work as a receptionist or you work somewhere where everybody can see you, you don't want to be like this all day with your phone in your hand. Even if you got to just check a little message or something, you're going to have to pick up your phone and look at it. Or you're going to have to deactivate the fingerprint scanner. You know, that, that's going to get annoying. I like to have my phone on the table and I like to just swipe it up and look at messages and keep it moving because I'm doing two, three things at a time. So fingerprint sensor on the back. Not a deal breaker, but just not my ideal location. Next. Now, this is one, one of my gripes that I have about a lot of phones, too. You can't change, you can't um, close all your apps at once. All right, now, if you like me and you got a thousand and one apps open at the same time, you can't close them all at once. Now, that's kind of annoying to me because when you hand somebody your phone, and this happens to me all the time because I have new phones and people want to see them. When you hand somebody your phone, I like to have all of my information cleared away. I don't want nobody to know what movie I was watching last. <laughs> yeah, I know what I'm talking about. I don't want nobody to know what I was shopping, what I was buying. I don't want anybody to know whose Instagram I was just stalking. I like to just, before I hand somebody my phone, if you see like on the Galaxy Note 5, if somebody says, oh, that's the new Note 5, can I see it? I say, okay, sure. I go to my recently used apps, close everything all out at once, and hand them the phone. Phones like this and phones like your iPhone, you're going to have to swipe everything away and then give it to them. And that makes you look even more guilty. <laughs> Before you hand somebody the phone, hold on a second. I got to start swiping 101 apps away. You know, that, that doesn't look good. But it is what it is. That's just one of my little, you know, being petty, being picky gripes. But it's something I got to mention. Next. Now, this has to do with the camera. There's no optical image stabilization. Now, when you're taking pictures, regular photos, you know, not a big deal. Because you do have HDR+. Plus. So, that'll clean up a lot of your photos. But if you're taking 4K video, you got to have steady hands. Uh, you're going to notice a lot of shake, especially if you're outside and you're trying to catch some action and, you know, you're already hyped up and, you know, you're breathing a little bit harder. You're going to get a lot of shake in your videos. So no optical image stabilization on this. Not really feeling that. Next, no multitasking. And what I mean by multitasking is not the uh, recently used apps and going back and forth to different apps. I'm talking about split screen multitasking. Now, you're not going to have that on any Nexus device until that becomes a stock Google feature. But if you had a phone like a Galaxy Note 4 or LG G4 and you upgrade into the Nexus 6P, this is something that you got to take into consideration. You might miss that feature. Now, a lot of people, I read all of the comments, a lot of people don't use the split screen multitasking. A lot of people don't use that. But a lot of people do, including me. I use that every day. That's one of my most used features. That's why the Galaxy Note 5 will always be my top phone because of the S Pen and because of the uh, split screen multitasking. And I give you the perfect example of why I use that. A lot of times I like to listen to underground music 
or old school music that you're not going to find on Amazon. You're not going to find it on iTunes, old DJ Clue CD, you know, old mixtapes from back in the days. A lot of this music you're only going to find on YouTube. And when you find that song on YouTube and you're playing it on YouTube, it's not going to be an actual video. It's just going to be the album cover, you know, the album art from whatever CD that was. And it's going to be the song playing. So if you're looking at your screen, it's just going to be a picture. Say I'm, I'm listening to an old uh, Tupac song from back in the days. It's just going to be a picture of Tupac, and it's going to be the old underground song. So, you know, I'm basically, you know, if you got a Nexus 6P, you're basically going to be stuck just looking at the screen, looking at a picture of Tupac. Now, if you got a Galaxy Note 5 or a V10 or a phone that has split-screen multitasking, what I, used to, what I used to do every day is I'll have the first part of the screen open, and I'm watching the video. The second part of the screen... Now I'll be on Instagram, I'll be on Twitter. So now I'm actually listening to the music and doing other stuff at the same time. So split screen multitasking, that's huge for me. It might not be that big of a deal for you. But for me, that's a big deal, especially the way I use it. Like I said, I'm doing two things at the same time every day. With Nexus 6P and a lot of these other phones, like the iPhone, you're only doing one task at a time and you're switching back and forth. And you know, once you exit out of YouTube, that's the end of the music. Unless you download the song or you play, you know, you have YouTube offline. If not, you're just going to have to pick one or the other. So now when you have split screen multitasking, you do two things at the same time. You stalk somebody's Instagram and you be on Twitter at the same time. All right, so you can't do that with your Nexus 6P. And last but not least... One of the things I don't like about the Nexus 6P is you don't have a lot of features. Now, if you're buying a Nexus, you probably don't really care about that because you're looking for that stock Android experience. So you don't really care about all of the fancy animations. You don't care about themes and all that because you're going to root this phone and, and drop a whole bunch of ROMs on it anyway. So then, you know, if you're real tech savvy, don't even worry about what I'm saying now. You already know what to do. You're going to be flashing a thousand ROMs as soon as you get your Nexus. But if you're not tech savvy, and you, you had an LG G4 and you used to having the themes and all that stuff, you're going to be downloading a lot of third-party apps because this is not a stock feature. So there's a lot of stock, little stock features that you got used to on other phones. They're not on the Nexus. Right? The Nexus is bone stock Android. Now, keep in mind, if you're buying the Nexus, chances are that's what you want. Do a little research first. If you don't know what a Nexus device really is, it's a device that has no bloatware on it, no no UI, no no, no custom animations, all that stuff. Everything is 100% stock Android, stock Google, uh, Google apps. All right, so you're going to have to download a lot of third-party apps, which you can. You could easily do that, but it's just stuff you're going to have to do. Same thing with the camera. Now, the camera on this phone is 100% basic. A basic point-and-shoot camera, not too many uh, editing features into it, especially if you had a G4. If you got a G4 or a V10, those are real cell phone cameras that you can edit everything. You can change the white balance. You can change the aperture, uh, the um, the ISO. You can change everything in the settings on the pictures and the video. When you get a Nexus phone, especially the Nexus 6P, it's basically point-and-shoot. But what you could do, though, there's other apps you could get when you go into your camera mode now on your Nexus, you can't do all of the fancy, you know, change into the Instagram filters that you can on your note phones and all of that. But you just download a, another camera. Now, one I use, I recommend is Camera Fun Pro. All right. So if you activate Camera Fun Pro, you see I got normal, oil brush, pixel, you got poster, sketch, black and white. I mean, it's, it's, it's a thousand and one different uh, apps you could download to remedy that problem. But I'm just talking about as a stock phone, and you take it out of the box and you go to your camera app, you're not going to see none. You're just going to see the camera, you're going to see the video camera, flash, maybe panorama, a few basic settings, but you know, not too many you know, extra features, not too many ways to change the colors and all that fancy fun stuff. Not too much fun. I, I guess that's what I'm trying to say. The camera is not too much fun. It's basic point and shoot, and uh, it, it works, but not too many options. Now... Let's get into everything that I do like. All right? That was a long list of stuff that I don't like. No deal breakers for me there. All right? Everything is just little stuff that I'm being picky about. No deal breakers. I guess the main thing I don't like about it, though, I would have to say is the no micro SD card and the no uh, removable battery. Those are my two probably biggest gripes and the fingerprint sensor on the back. Other than that, everything else I can live with. I can live with everything else. 
Next, I don't know if I don't even know if I mentioned that, but no micro USD, uh, USB, <laughs> no micro SD card expansion. I don't know if I mentioned that earlier, but you, you can't put a micro SD card in here, so be careful. All right, now if you're a heavy user and you got a whole bunch of files and videos and all that, make sure you get a big version. Don't get the 32 gig version, get a 64 or 128. All right, because you can't put any uh, expendable memory. Now, let's get into everything that I do like. First up, the price. All right, now. This is a, a a really priced well phone, if I say that right. I, this phone is priced really well. Compared to phones like the Galaxy Note and the S6 Edge Plus, phones that's going to run, and the iPhone 6S Plus, phones that's going to run you close to $1,000, you can get the Nexus 6 right now for 500 bucks. All right, $550, you get a Nexus 6 Plus. Uh, Nexus 6P. <laughs> now, if you remember back in the days, that was part of the selling point of buying the Nexus. The Nexus device was a stock Android phone and it was always a little bit cheaper than whatever phone was out at that time. Now, lately, the price for Nexus phones been going up. But you remember the early Nexus phones, they used to be, I wouldn't say half of the price of a Galaxy Note or whatever the top dog phone was out, but they was a lot lower. So shout out to uh, Hawaii for dropping the price on this Nexus and not putting it up there with, you know, with the Note 5 and the S6 Edge Plus and the iPhone. Six, uh, $550 all the way up to $650, that's a reasonable price for a top-of-the-line phone. So that's the first thing I'm feeling about this phone. The price is 100% right. Next, the build quality. Now this phone, this, th this is why I say this is a major upgrade from your Nexus 6. If you hold the Nexus 6 in your hand and you hold the 6P in your hand, you're going to feel the difference. All right, this phone has a quality build to it. I'm loving the aluminum design to it. Now I got the... Um, the aluminum color one so you don't see any fingerprints all right now my boy got the black one and fingerprints galore so if you if you don't like to use cases and you worried about fingerprints you got to get the aluminum or you got to get the white version if you get the black one you got to carry around a microfiber cleaning cloth you're gonna have to wipe it down all day long but build quality on this i'm loving it a lot of people didn't like this little piece on the bottom but you can't really tell and when you hold it in your hand you can't feel it a lot of people were saying this little like plasticish kind of feel to the bottom when you're holding it you're not going to feel it you're not going to have to you know you're not going to say okay the bottom feels cheap but the top feels good you won't notice all right beautiful build quality nice solid weight to it definitely loving it all right so that's the next thing i'm loving i'm loving the uh, aluminum-ish build to it next the display now this display is beautiful everybody knows that samsung made the panel and samsung is at the top when it comes to these our uh, phone displays I'll tell you any day of the week if I got to choose between IPS, uh, LCD, and AMOLED, I'm going with AMOLED any day. All right. The blacks look nice and dark, super dark, All right. nice and rich. Now, one upgrade from this and the Nexus 6, the camera might not do it justice, but the Nexus 6 kind of has a little creamish, a little creamish hint to the whites in it, whereas the Nexus 6P, the whites are now truly white. All right, so you get rid of that yellowish cream tint. So a better display. All right, better display. I'm definitely feeling it. Now, one thing you'll notice between the Nexus 6 and the 6P, even though the Nexus 6 is 6 inches and this is 5.7, it almost looks like the same size display. The phone is actually the same height. But the Nexus 6 is a little bit wider. All right, it's a little bit wider. But you're not going to really notice the difference. A lot of times it feels like I'm still using my Nexus because it's a stock Android experience. So when I pick up this phone and use it, I still get that same feel like I'm using my Nexus 6 with the uh, Nexus 6P. All right, so I'm definitely feeling the, the AMOLED display. It's a win. Next, fast charge. All right, now, fast charge on this phone is amazing. This is a true shit shower shave phone. Y'all heard me use that line before. This is the true definition of a shit shower shave phone. When you get home from work, if your battery's on 40%, plug it in. Go take a shit, go shower, <laughs> go shave in whichever order you do. By the time you're ready to get dressed, even if it's quick, maybe in 30, 40 minutes, even if it's quick, by the time you're ready to walk out the door, your phone is going to be back on 100%. And even if you just run in the house real quick, just to uh, do one of the three, right? whichever one of the three you got to do real quick. When you run in the house and you plug your phone in, 15 minutes later when you come back out, you good for the rest of the night. Right, you good for the rest of the night. That's a major win, especially since you don't have wireless charging. 
so you can't just put uh, bring a little portable wireless charger with you something like this and just charge it in your car and since you got USB-C now you can't just use your old car charger that you had from your old previous phones so having a fast charge is important until technology steps up where now everybody has USB-C car chargers you don't want to have to keep bringing the cable from your house and your job and you know carrying around a whole bunch of cables until that until the day comes where USB-C is the norm fast charge like this is amazing and it works great it works great I, I used it the other night now normally I don't really be that much of in a rush to get a fast charge but I used it the other night my phone was about 20 percent I charged it for like maybe 30 minutes and I forgot to look at it when I pulled it off the charger but when I got outside my battery was almost full almost full and I only charged the phone for a few minutes all right so fast charge on this is a major win this is the uh, shit shower shave phone next since we're talking about battery battery life on this now you're getting the 3450 milliamp battery I know that sounds huge but when it comes to day-to-day -day heavy use I'm still getting the same amount of time that I get from a lot of my other phones now I got a little bit more I'm on my Galaxy Note 5 I could get about five straight hours of beast mode I get six hours of straight beast mode status with this now six hours that's a lot that's almost a full day now if you have work and you work eight hour shift chances are you're not going to be using the phone for six of those eight hours depending on where you work at though if you're a security guard and you don't do nothing but sit in a booth all day then you could literally use your phone all day long so you're going to get six hours of heavy use with this phone before you're going to have to charge it up and coupled with the fast charge charge it up for 10 minutes and then you get another six hours so that's a major major win all right so battery life on this 100 percent effective speaking of battery life the next thing i like is a new feature that's um out with the uh, with this phone on uh, Android uh, 6.0 is the doze the doze feature now what that does is it shuts down a lot of applications that you're not using in the background it refreshes at a slower rate it's gonna make your phone last longer now how does that come into play well the other night I put my phone on the table but I was testing it on purpose I put my phone on the table I had 26 percent at night now I woke up the next morning you know, I didn't touch the phone. The phone was at 24%. So now, now I get a thousand times more notifications than the average person because I'm, you know, living that savage life on social media. So the phone is going off all night. I'm getting alerts. I'm, you know, I'm getting messages and stuff all night long. But at the same time, I only lost a few percentages of battery. That's amazing. Okay, so that means if your phone is at 50% and maybe you spend the night at your friend's house, it's not like before now. If you spend a night at your boy's house or you spend a night, you know, you meet, you meet somebody and you spend a night, you had to turn your phone off because you didn't have a charger. So you had to turn your phone off because you didn't want to lose 30, 40 percent battery in the middle of the night. Now, with this phone, you don't have to do that. If you're not using the phone, you don't have to turn it off. You don't have to put on power save mode and all that stuff. All you got to do is just leave the phone. The Doze feature is going to take care of the rest of that for you. All right. So Doze is a major win. Next, USB-C. Now, this is something that I like about this phone, even though I don't like the fact that I'm going to have to start buying a whole bunch of more, you know, a whole bunch of new USB-C charging devices. But USB-C is the wave of the future. All right, you're, getting better, uh, you're getting better power delivery. That's what enables it to ch uh, charge that fast because of USB-C. You're getting faster transfer speeds. And one thing that I love about USB-C cables, they're fully reversible. If y'all watch my videos, whenever I got to plug something in, you always see me plug it in once and say, oh, I did it wrong, turn it upside down, and realize it was right the first time, and, and then, and then pull, plug it back in. And that happens all day, every day. I'm pretty sure that happens to y'all. When you get home, you go to plug your phone in, it's upside down, and you got to plug it in another way. You're not going to have that problem anymore with USB-C. Right? They're fully interchangeable, and trust me, in about a year... A lot of products are going to come out with USB-C, and that's it. You're going to have USB-C in the TVs for uh, HDMI. Get the, all of these other kind of cables. They're going to start phasing out. USB-C is the wave of the future. So now you got you know future proof on your Nexus 6P. Are right, you one step closer to the future? So I'm feeling the USB-C. Next, Google Now on tap. Now this is a feature in um, Android 6.0 that I'm really feeling. Let me show you how that works. Now, say I'm on Facebook. Now, when you hold down the button, it opens your Google Now on tap. So now you see I still got the little G. I could go straight to Google Now and check out all my cards. But whatever's on the screen, Google Now is going to pull up that information. So you see now, I just happen to be looking at Wallapop and Sally Tomato. 
All right, Sally Tomato posted something on um, Facebook. So you see, I got Wallapop just popped up. Now, one thing I will say about Google Now and Tap, this is the first version of it, the early build. It doesn't work all of the time because last time I just checked that, it pulled up Sally Tomato and Wallapop. All right, see, now this time it just did it. Maybe I had to scroll up a little bit more. Sometimes it works 100%. Sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes it'll just say can't connect to Google Now. You know, so this is the first version. I'm pretty sure by the second or third update, it'll be running just as fast as everything else and running just as smooth. So you see Sally Tomato checked in that brick. So if I hold it down, Google Now tap is going to bring up Wallapop. That's on the top of the screen. I could just go right to that. Or I could Google right to a website for brick. So I could just hit the website and it'll take me right to Brick and I see what is Brick. Okay, it's a, a place I could go to to eat and you know you, you buy the tickets and all that stuff. So Google Now and Tap, it works great. And you can use that on any app. I like it also when I'm on Facebook. If I'm on now, I don't want to put nobody on blast, but if I'm on somebody's Facebook page and I go to Google Now and Tap, it'll bring up that person's Twitter, that person's Instagram, that person's Voxer, you know, that person's message, that person's contact, whatever's on there. It'll bring it right up. So a lot of new features on Android 6.0. You just got to play with them for yourself. I haven't even fully played with all of them just yet. But the, more, the, the one I use the most so far is the Google Now on 10. Next. Now, Google Now. Now, nah, Google Now. The Nexus 6 does have a few motions that I like. One of the motions is when you pick your phone up, it's going to automatically take you to your notification screen. All right, it's going to be it's going to be dimmed out a little bit, but it automatically takes you to that screen. So that's a hot little motion right there. A lot of times you might not even have to open up the phone. A lot of times you just want to see if you got any missed calls, any missed messages. No, put the phone back down. You don't even have to open it. All right, so I'm definitely feeling that little uh, a few notifications, a uh, few uh, motions. And another motion you got is the double tap, double tap the power button. That'll take you to your camera. All right, even from the lock screen, wherever you at. All you got to do is double tap on the power button, and that's going to take you to your camera. So there's a few different ways you could go to your camera. You could just press the button and just swipe up right from right here, take you to the camera, or double tap the power button. So you do got a few motions that's built into Google. All right, so these are stock Google uh, Google features for Android, uh, for uh, Marshmallow. <laughs> Marshmallow, Android Marshmallow. All right, I got to get used to saying that. Next. The next thing I like about this phone is the camera. All right, now the camera on this that's another upgrade from your Nexus 6. Right, now, everybody knows the Nexus 6 didn't have the best camera in the world, especially at nighttime. In the daytime, the Nexus 6 is fine, point and shoot camera. But at nighttime, that's where this camera really suffered at. So now you got an updated camera. Still not the best in the world, but you're gonna be able to take some quality pictures. Now, I took a few pictures. Let me pull them up. I'll show you what they look like. Now, you're looking at this through YouTube, so, of course, it's gonna be a little bit uh, watered down. But let me show you, like, this is last night. I took a picture of this Monster 24K speaker. But look at the detail. All right, you can see all the detail. I took some pictures up in the gym. Nice, bright, and colorful pictures. You know, because keep in mind, this is just a basic camera. This is not your photography-based camera. This is a picture in the daytime. You can zoom in. Quality photos in this. 4K video, nothing to complain about the camera. The only thing I will say is, if you're into you know, editing software and you like to tweak your camera settings a lot, you're not gonna really be able to do that with the stock camera. You're gonna have to download a third-party camera app. So the camera on this is a win, nothing to complain about. Even at nighttime, when you use the flash, you don't get those blurry nighttime photos. The only problem I will say about the camera is if you're shooting a 4K video, just try to keep your hands steady. Next. Now, this is a Nexus device. That's one thing I like about this too. This is a Nexus device. So when you buy this device and you take it out the box, you're getting no bloatware on this. All right, so none of these unnecessary, all of these Samsung Pay and Samsung Music and Samsung this and all of these apps that you might never use, you don't have them, you know, hogging up all your, all your space on your phone. None, even a lot of the Google apps you have to install on this. All right, so you would think that this is since this is a Google phone, you know, Google stock Google experience, you would think that Google's just going to dump every single Google app that they got on you, and it's not like that. Uh, you're going to have to go out and download Google Translate and Google Currents, all these you know Google apps that you use. They don't come pre-installed, so if you don't use them, less bloatware to worry about. 
And another thing that I really like about this phone, now this might be one of the top three things, and this might be one of your main reasons for buying this phone, is it's a Nexus. So if you like the stock Android experience, you're going to love this phone. And if you like to be the first person to get a new update, then you're going to get that first on your Nexus 6P. All right, so everybody that got a Galaxy Note, HTC M9, LG V10, soon as Google updates their Android OS, if you got a Nexus 6P, you getting it first. Uh, you can believe that you getting it first than everybody else. So if that's important to you, you like to be the first one to try out all the new features and the first one to play with all the new software, then get a Nexus. All right, that's that's a hot feature right there. Next, fingerprint scanner. All right, fingerprint scanner on this. This is one of my favorite features about this phone, the fingerprint scanner. All right, look how fast this opens up. All right, let me close it and I'll open it back up. Now, real quick, I want to tell you something too. A lot of people were saying that you don't have to open the screen to do to use the fingerprint scanner. You don't. You don't have to. Like when the phone is off, you can just hold the fingerprint scanner down and it'll open the phone. But I don't do that. Now I should have made that clear when I showed y'all last time. I don't do that. When I pick up my phone, I like to see my notifications first. All right? And that's one of the problems I have with my iPhone 6S Plus is that when I open the phone, sometimes it opens too fast. So now, let me show you. So now if I use the fingerprint scanner and open the phone, the first thing I'm gonna have to do is scroll down to my notification bar. All right, so that's an extra step. I like to just pick up my phone, I like to look at it first, and see um, my, you know, you could arrange these in, in, in priority order. So I like to see what notifications I got first, then I open the phone. Okay, now if you don't like to do that, if you, if you just like to open up to whatever last screen you was using, then you can just pick up the phone, press the fingerprint scanner, and it'll open back up. So, Say, for instance, I just happen to be on, let's go to Snapchat. All right, so, matter of fact, let's go somewhere else. Let's see. Um, all right, let's go on Swarm. All right, so if I, have to, if I happen to be on Swarm and I'm doing some stuff, and then the phone times out, the phone screen times out, or I had to put it down real quick, here comes the boss. Now I want to get back up to right what I was doing. You can hold the fingerprint scanner and open up right back to what the last app you was using. So that's when it comes into play. That's when it's going to be good. But most of the time, I don't do that. Most of the time, I like to pick up the phone. I like to look at my notifications first, and then I open the phone up. But fingerprint scan on this, it works flawlessly. Flawlessly. Now, this is the easiest fingerprint scanner to set up out of all of the new phones that I got so far. The iPhone one is pretty good and pretty easy to set up. But the easiest one to set up, if you want to set up a whole bunch of different fingers, will be on the Nexus 6P. Now, a lot of people ask me, which one is better, the iPhone or the Nexus 6P? And I got to be honest, they're pretty much exactly the same. All right, if I pick up the Nexus 6P and I put my fingerprint on it to open it up 10 times, 10 out of 10 times, it's going to open. If I pick up my iPhone 10 out of 10 times, it's going to open. So you can't really say which one is better. They're both 100%. And going forward now into the future, all of these phones that's coming out with fingerprint scanners, this is one thing that we're going to be not talking about in, in, in a couple of months. With all these new phones coming out, we're not going to be talking about which fingerprint scanner works the best. They're all going to be just the same. They're all going to work 100% of the time because that's how the technology is going. So if you're worried about fingerprint scan on this, is it going to work all of the time? The answer is yes. All right. Now, like I said, you, could just, you don't have to unlock the screen first, but... If you want to see your notifications, you're going to have to press the power button first, and then you see your notifications, then you unlock it. All right, and it works. Now, you see, I just I did it from the bottom of my finger. It doesn't work from the bottom. But nine times out of ten, I would, not even nine times, I'm going to say ten times out of ten, if you put your finger where it's supposed to be, right in the middle, it's going to open right up. You're not going to have any problems with it opening up. No problems at all. So fingerprint scanner, major win. Now, last but not least. The main thing that I like about this phone, this is probably this is probably the best part about this phone, in my opinion, is the speakers. All right, now real quick, front-facing camera does work good too. It's eight megapixels, not the best, not Galaxy Note status, but it works great. You'll be able to take a thousand selfies and they'll look good. All right, so don't worry about the front-facing camera either. This is a basic point-and-shoot camera status, but it works great. Front-facing speakers. All right, now this is my favorite part about this phone. These have to be, I would say, these are the best speakers I got right now on any phone. Better than the M9, better than the Nexus 6. All right, these speakers are super duper loud. Now, this could be important to you. If you're buying this phone and you're going to be using it as a media device, 
which means if you work somewhere and you know a good portion of your day is sitting around watching YouTube videos and you can't play it loud enough where you could connect the Bluetooth speaker and you're gonna use your phone speakers this is the phone for you all right this is the phone for you when you got the, uh, the phone in landscape mode and you're watching a YouTube video you're gonna hear sound coming from both sides of the phone okay this is not this is not one of those uh, dual speakers just for show you know, a lot of phones put two speaker grills at the bottom, but it's really only one speaker. This is two individual speakers, and they sound super loud and super good. Even better than the Nexus 6. And the Nexus 6, these are my favorite speakers. So this is an upgraded speaker right here. It gets even louder. Now, if you work outside or you work somewhere that's noisy, and you're relying on uh, your phone speakers to hear your notifications, trust me when I tell you, set some loud notifications on this. You're not going to miss any alerts. All right, and that's what I love about it. I use this phone as my alarm. So when I go to sleep and I'm taking that quick power nap and I know I can't oversleep, a lot of these other phones, they, they, they won't wake me up. But the Nexus 6 has always woken me up because it's super loud. And this one is no different. The Nexus 6P is going to wake you up when you're sleeping. Trust me. But when you're watching those uh, YouTube videos and you're on SoundCloud and you're on Amazon Prime Music, whatever you know music app you're using and you're listening to music, this sounds great. All right, so you got a beautiful display with these banging speakers. This is a total win. So I would say now, if I had to pick my top three features about this phone, it's going to be the fingerprint scanner, it's going to be the dual speakers, and the, and the build quality. The build quality, dual speakers, fingerprint scanner, and we could go one step further and go with the display. All right, so this is a major upgrade. If you got a Nexus 6, this is your time to sell it and get this Nexus 6P. Trust me when I tell you, you're going to be feeling like you got to upgrade. Now, a lot of phones on the market, you sell them and you get the next version and you feel like you still got the same phone. This is not one of them. I right? Take my advice. You might take a loss with the Nexus 6. You know, you might only be able to get $200 for it or $250. Bucks. Take that and run with it and go get yourself a Nexus 6P. Now, let me answer my last category. All right, my favorite one, the Floss Factor. Now, if you don't know what the floss factor is, we go through this all the time. That means if you're somewhere and somebody got an iPhone 6S Plus, somebody got a Galaxy Note 5, somebody got an LG V10, somebody got a Nexus, uh, a Samsung Edge, the S6 Edge Plus, all of these you know, top dog, high-end phones out, and you got your Nexus 6P, where are you on the food chain? Are you on the top of the food chain, sitting like a boss, or do you have to wait till everybody leaves, and then now you're the man again? Well, I would say on a scale of 1 to 10, 10 being the top of the line and 1 being trash, I would say the Nexus 6 on the floor scale is a solid 9. The thing I, uh, the thing I like about this phone, when you're outside, so far now, I don't, I don't know how that's going to be in the next couple of weeks or months, but so far, I haven't seen anybody with one yet. So when I go out, I see everybody with, a lot of people got this V10. A lot of people went out and got a V10. You already know, everybody in the world got an iPhone and everybody got... A galaxy phone so when you pull this out you're very unique you're gonna be looking different and at the same time everybody knows once they see Nexus on the back everybody knows that you got the latest and greatest version of Android everybody knows that your phone is stock and you know the real techies know that there's a 9 to a 90 percent chance that you got a nice custom ROM on there and you know about this game so on a scale of 1 to 10 I'm giving this a solid 9 this is right up there on the top with everything else so if you're buying this phone, you will be sitting on top of the food chain. Don't worry about it. All right, so hit me up in the comments. Let me know what y'all think about this. Shout out to everybody that rock with me on Facebook, Foursquare, Twitter, Google+. Shout out to all the Google gangsters. I see y'all holding down that Facebook page. Shout out to everybody hitting me up on Boxer. And a special shout out to everybody rocking with me on Instagram. Y'all know that's where I'm at full time, 100% full throttle. And a special shout out to everybody rocking with the Amazon Warrior on Sundays. Y'all already know, Stream Gangsters on deck. Get your drinks ready. No meat boys allowed. Oh, yeah. Let me just um real quick. A lot of people always ask me afterwards. <laughs> let me pull up the Instagram just so you can see if you want to follow me on Instagram and, and join into the savagery. This is where we at. Flossy underscore that uh, Flossy underscore Carter. And if you see the Instagram, you see it's a lot of memes. It's a lot of funny jokes. We have a good time. No sensitivity. Oh, yeah. One more thing. I almost forgot. Fellas, ladies, say it with me. All y'all haters, all y'all trolls, close your eyes and picture me rolling. It's your boy Floss. I'm out. Deuces. <laughs>